Okay, folks, I think we're finally live here at the uh, historical fire station, the Pompano Beach Historical Society, and our feature speaker tonight, our featured speaker tonight is going to be Rob Ramsey. He's going to give us a tour of the fire station here, what is going on, what they've been doing. We actually have one of the first fire trucks out in the rain out there that he's probably not happy about, but nevertheless, I'm going to turn it. Sorry, we're a little bit late. We had to kind of get this virtual Zoom stuff all up and going. So hopefully you're out there, you're listening. Rob has a lot of information to give to you guys tonight. Uh, please come, please get online, please support uh, the Pompano Beach Historical Society. Rob Brantley here with the Fire Museum. Also, we also want to let you know that we're having the Highwaymen in two weeks. Our Highwaymen exhibit will be right here at the Women's Club. That'll be being taking place on Friday, the 13th, I believe, of November, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Um, so please uh, come join us and get in on that. We're going to have some uh, old, very old vintage paintings. Teresa Hare is going to bring some of her husband's, uh, Alfred Hare's paintings, some of uh, Sam Newton's paintings that you can't find anywhere else. So please come and join us. Uh, and uh, if you need to go online, Pat has everything, I think, uh, by going to Pompano Beach Historical Society, you can find all the information on that, or Facebook as well. So, uh, I will not uh, take up any more of your time. I'm going to turn this whole evening over to Rob Brantley, the head of our fire museum here, Pompano Beach Fire Museum. And, uh, and he's done a great job, him and his fire uh, people that come and uh, work with them, the, the firemen that are there now and uh, have retired. So, Rob, it's all yours. Hey, everybody. Sorry about the delay. It was totally my fault. Um, I uh, screwed it up, but uh, we're making it work anyway. Anyway, uh, because of the rain, we're starting inside the museum, and um, this building uh, was Pompano's first fire station, it was built in 1926. For Pompano's first fire truck, which is a 1926 La France. Uh, it's out front. We'll see that in a minute. But uh, I just want to give you a quick uh, view of the inside because uh, usually it's a, uh, this is a kind of a, a workshop as much as it is a museum, or more, actually, more. Uh, as you can see uh, around uh, the building, Uh, was uh, uh, it's a 1924 that I got from Alaska for a parts truck. Uh, not the little fire truck there, but the castle uh, 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 the wood spoke rims off of a, a truck I got from Alaska as a parts truck. And over here, uh, is uh, some spare parts that uh, I've been accumulating uh, over the years. This engine came out of the Palatka truck, uh, which is, uh, like I said, a 1924. And I just uh, picked up uh, this engine over here from a Fort Lauderdale truck. Um, uh, back up a little bit. So. This uh, came out of a uh, 1926 American France. It was a Fort Lauderdale truck that I got uh, down in Miami. Um, I found it uh, through a bunch of groups I belong to. Uh, and we at the museum, we purchased it just for parts because parts are so hard to come by uh, for these old trucks. You, there, there's really no price on them uh, because uh, eventually, you know, they're basically made of unobtainium. Uh, you can't get it. You know, and these are, these are the T heads off of this truck they cover the pistons. These are basically 855 cubic inch and they have a, a five and a half inch piston and a six inch throw. Uh, and this is a, a pump off of uh, the 1925. It's a 750 gallon a minute pump and I had to have a spare one of those of course. And I recently pulled this uh, here, this is a 12 
It's for the truck that's behind me. This is Pompano's second fire truck. It's a 1949 American of France. Um, it, uh, the first truck, the 1926, was the only truck Pompano had from 1926 to 1949. We'll go over that later in the slideshow if um, I didn't screw that up too bad. Um, normally, I'd be projecting all this on a projector we have at the museum, but uh, um, uh, today I'm technically challenged. Um, anyway, this is just a pair of like much but it is. This is a spare radiator for this truck, which very few people have a spare radiator for the truck. And behind this radiator is a radiator for the uh, truck. And if uh, you look around, if you look up at the ceiling, look closer here on the right, you see the ship lap that uh, uh, they used uh, to make the floor of the attic. But if uh, you look at some spots, maybe you come over here, you can see it white. And that is actually where they used the same ship lap to form up the tie beam of the building. And then they stripped it off and uh, reused it to uh, make the uh, floor of the attic. Uh, and anyway, that's, that's as far as I'm going to get into it right uh, inside here. And we're going to walk out. Oh, wait, real quick. Here's an interesting item we have. This is the air raid siren that came off Old City Hall. Uh, it, it's not the first uh, air raid siren, but it's the second one. When they were tearing down Old City Hall, uh, they were going to throw it away, but uh, I was happened to be there and uh, I had them put it in the back of my pickup. So I've had it ever since. It still works, uh, but uh, we're finding a place for it uh, eventually. Anyway, we're going to walk out now and uh, we're going to look at the uh, top of the first fire truck. So it's, it's, it's rainy, but uh, I keep leave it on. So I just going to tell you what. Uh, it's all covered up now, but this is Pompano's first fire truck. And here's the engines I showed you inside. Here's what they're supposed to kind of look like when they're together. Uh, this one's a little dirty. We're about to take this one apart in a few months and uh, go through it. That's why I have all the spare parts. <laughs> so let's go around this way so we don't lose the Wi Fi. Uh, now we're going to go inside this box. All right, we're starting over again. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome to the Pompano Fire Museum. Yeah, this is nice. All right, uh, this is uh, Pompano's first fire truck. Uh, like I repeated three or four times, it's a 1926 American of France. It um, was the only fire truck Pompano had from 1926 to 1949. The building behind it, which we were in earlier, if y'all can still remember that long ago, um, was, um, uh, built for this truck. It arrived, I believe, uh, July 22nd, I, I think it was. Anyway, it was before the uh, Miami hurricane uh, drug its way through Pompano and knocked everything down. Um, next slide. And this is an original factory picture uh, sent. Uh, what, Pat? Hey, Dane, can you see that? I see it. Okay. Uh, tell me if, if I'm talking about the wrong things, uh, Dane. All right. Uh, this is a factory photo from uh, American La France, which is in Elmira, New York. Um, it was sent along with um, the uh, truck when it came down here, along with uh, another person who uh, taught two drivers how to um, uh, operate the truck and pump and uh, all the maintenance things. He was here a week or so. Uh, well, we have uh, lots of that documentation. I actually, we use this picture to reconstruct the truck because it was in uh, pretty tough shape when we uh, uh, got it built. All right, we only have two or three pictures from 1926 uh, when the truck was brand new. And this is one of them. I actually have these people's names. 
but because I'm not prepared, and which is very unusual, um, uh, these are uh, Minnie, Mo, and Jack. No, those were the <laughs> muffler guys. But uh, no, these were, um, uh, as you can see, this guy apparently was a firefighter. You, can, you can't see me pointing. I'm pointing if nobody's watching. Um, anyway, this is inside the fire museum or the first fire station, which is the museum now. And the reason why it looks so small is because there was a wall built down the middle and the fire chief and his family lived on the other side of that wall. And it was also later on became uh, a bunkhouse for uh, uh, firefighters and the, uh, the front part of it was an office for the chief. The next. And uh, this is me on a bunk, no, wait. Uh, that's uh, uh, sometime uh, in the 40s uh, from what I got down to, but you can see this, uh, I'm still trying to point. If you look uh, and see the windows, that was the one bay that was boarded up and where the uh, fire chief and his family lived. Next. Uh, this is just um, uh, some old geezer. I mean, he was a uh, former fire chief. He dropped by. And uh, if you notice in this picture, uh, uh, go to the next slide. Uh, if you notice, <laughs> <laughs> you probably noticed that the truck was missing a few things. Uh, well, back in 1939, that's as far as I can read. Uh, next picture. The truck uh, rolled uh, going to a fire on uh, uh, Northwest 3rd and 3rd. It was making the turn and it hit a pothole or something. And a guy named Sleepy Slaughter was driving the truck. He's apparently wasn't supposed to be uh, a driver, but he got to the station first and uh, he got the truck started and uh, drove it to the fire. And he didn't quite make it because he made the corner a little too fast. I've spoken to two people that actually saw it happen and they were children at the time because everybody else is dead. But um, uh, they both described it similarly and it was during the day and so that's how I got that information and also through some documentation. But when that happened, it rolled onto the um, uh, left side of the truck and it uh, knocked off the hose reel. Uh, and there's a chemical pump, if you see right below the seat or behind the seat, that's a chemical extinguisher. And above that, there's a, 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 a gas tank. Well, they have, uh, and the hose reel's gone and uh, the lanterns are still there, but uh, they're not where they used to be. Anyway, next picture. That's for another time. And uh, like I said, it was uh, from uh, 1926 to 1949. Next slide. Um, this, uh, that was the only truck Pompano had in 49. This, is, this picture is like at the end of 49. It's kind of a setup picture. Uh, if you look on the tailboard of the old truck, which is the 26, uh, you'll notice a young man, and that young man is a 16-year-old uh, Eugene Hedges, who became fire chief um, later on, and um, he actually hired me, and he hired a bunch of people I know, and um, also the uh, guy in the black uh, rubber coat and boots, that is uh, a Tafoya. Uh, he, uh, that's, uh, what's his, what's his uh, name, uh, Scooter? Oh, that was Joe, wasn't it? Joe DeFoya. Yeah, Joe. Joe DeFoya. Yeah, that's Joe DeFoya. I really don't know. I have the names of the other people, but I really don't know who they are uh, uh, right offhand. And if you notice, the uh, tw the 26 uh, is starting to look a lot different. They had a, an external siren. Uh, the other hand crank siren that's on there right now had been broken off and the bell had been uh, moved down to the side of the truck, which used to be on top of the hose reel. Um, and uh, there's also, if you were able to see it, underneath the uh, rear wheel of the 26, there's a Coke bottle used as a, uh, um, a wheel chalk. So this was kind of a posed picture because they were closing the, uh, this was, they were moving everything over to Old City Hall. Next. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, between that time and the early 50s, 
uh, the old truck was either at City Hall or it was at the beef station next. Uh, here's old City Hall. And here's the, at the top of old City Hall, you can see where that's the first air raid siren they had. And like I told you in the other building, uh, I have the second one. And you can see there in the picture is the 26, and next to it's a military vehicle, and um, the uh, 49 is uh, next to the building. Uh, behind that uh, is uh, where the fire trucks were kept, uh, and above that are the sleeping quarters on the second floor, uh, which there's lots of stories to go along with that, uh, but we'll, that'll be a later date. Next. <laughs> Um, uh, this is where things get a little muddled. They, uh, uh, next, uh, that's, uh, that's what the truck looked like around the time we're talking about early fifties or so sometime, uh, near the late fifties, early sixties, uh, which I just reached that I, the truck from what, um, I gather, I'm still working on, I've got to contact Hillsborough Beach, but Hillsborough actually used this truck for a few years to, um, from the late 50s up until the mid to upper 60s. And then uh, if, next picture, and uh, next picture, then uh, somehow it ended up in a fire museum uh, I believe it was two museums. Uh, one, I think, was down in Miami, was there for a short time, and then somehow they sold it or gave it to another museum that was up in North Carolina, but I don't have all of that exact information, but that's what it seems to be. Go ahead. Uh, this is a picture inside of, of one of the museums. I think this is the one up in North Carolina, and the next picture is also in the same place. And if you notice in that picture uh, where the gas tank uh, used to be on top, they put another chemical tank. They just set that there and the bell is gone and a few other things are, have changed. Now, so after that, uh, from all the different sources, this is what I've come up with. Uh, I'm not sure of positive of all of it. Dane, you're still speaking. Um, now this, after it, uh, after it uh, left the museum, or Pompano somehow found out that the truck was not where it was supposed to be. Apparently they sent a truck up to the North Carolina, retrieved the truck, then they brought it back. And I saw it in 1969 myself at the beach station facing south in the Southeast Bay with four flat tires. And then all of a sudden it disappeared and I heard that it was auctioned off. I called Chief Hedges about that and he vaguely remembered something to do with that. Well, it was auctioned off to a guy named Phil, Phil Baumgarten. And it was never really lost because, um, Dane, uh, uh, oh, it's Bob, Bob Bush, Bob Bush, was friends, he was a fire uh, fire captain or fire lieutenant or something. What was he, Dane? Captain. <laughs> captain. Captain Bush uh, knew Phil uh, uh, Baumgarten well. And um, uh, so they he knew the truck was there and other people did too. Uh, but there's another story that kind of goes along with it, but we, we're eating up time here. But the truck basically set outside the warehouse down in Fort Lauderdale that Phil owned out in the open. And you saw the picture from before, if you want to well, no, go to the next picture. That's what it looked like when it arrived at Phil Baumgarten's warehouse and then go again. And that's what it looked like uh, when, uh, when Chief uh, Soderlund and Dave Seiss, uh, that's Chief Soderlund uh, on the, um, uh, uh, to, well, the older looking gentleman, <laughs> I'm dyslexic, so give me a break. And that's Dave Seiss, uh, the guy with the porno mustache. Um, and um, they are posing in front of the truck 
uh, before they it was retrieved. Uh, and they had they had to negotiate with Phil to buy the truck because uh, he didn't want to sell it if the city of Pompano had anything to do with it because he had some dealings with the city of Pompano and they didn't uh, get along. So he told them that uh, after uh, I believe Dave or or uh, uh, Bob Bush um, talked to Phil and told him that the city wouldn't have anything to do with it. It was all done, uh, it would be separate from the city. Um, uh, anyway, so next picture. So we uh, raised some money. It's, it's, there's so many long stories to go along with this, so I'm cutting everything short. This is Bob Driscoll. He had Driscoll's towing. He used to do all the city's towing for a long time. And uh, he, uh, for nothing, he's, for years, for nothing, he towed us around everywhere. But he's retrieving the truck. He's right there. They're removing part of a, some sort of tree that was growing up in it. Uh, next. And I got a, uh, we got ex some experts. Uh, you double clicked on me, so you screwed that up. Uh, no, the other way. So we got some, uh, <laughs> go, just click, you know, the, I, my joke's ruined, go ahead. All right, here's a, um, uh, here's the truck with its first, when we first started taking it apart. I say we, um, I was not much of a part of that at all because uh, I hadn't been on the department long enough uh, uh, to know where the, uh, uh, as they say, where the crappers were. So um, um, anyway, um, uh, this, this next picture, uh, this is some more, uh, more pictures of the first restoration. Uh, uh, you can notice the bronze pump and uh, the rest of it uh, keep going. Uh, this is the first restoration. If you notice that uh, the, the bell is still on the side, um, the chemical tank is there, but no, there's no plumbing. The chemical tank was actually had been used as a, as a fuel tank um, at one time because the uh, other uh, tank had rusted out. The hose reel that's in the back is off of a, a, a spray truck, but it worked. And you notice there's no lanterns on the back. But it was a, it, they did a, a really decent uh, job of getting rid of the rust and, and saving the truck. Next. Um, this is a Pompano's second uh, truck. Uh, you saw it inside the building, but this is just a, a damn good picture. I thought you'd like to see it. Um, I actually had the uh, honor and privilege of riding the tailboard of this truck uh, up till, uh, to a few fires. Uh, um, for a couple of years, they retired it, I believe. Was when they retired, Dane, in '83 or '82? Yeah, but yeah. I think they put it back in service again for a while. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have, I've been hitting the head a lot. Anyway, I had eventually retired, and uh, 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 by then we had uh, uh, acquired the museum. Next picture, please. Uh, so uh, we, we, um, we needed to. We knew that the. Uh, building was, uh, the original fire station was still uh, owned by Pompano and hadn't been knocked down yet, uh, like so many other historic buildings in Pompano. <laughs> Next. Uh, this is uh, uh, a picture of us uh, starting to uh, do the demolition. A recreation had, uh, was using the building for a long time. Uh, I talked to several people in the fifth from in the fifties that uh, uh, were you know little league and stuff like that where they kept all their equipment there. And if you notice in the back on this uh, to the uh, left side of the picture, uh, that's the pump house. And the reason you can see the pump house is because the fire museum or the fire, first fire station was a freestanding building. The building I'm standing in right now wasn't built yet. Uh, so this is us hollowing the building out and getting rid of all the add-ons and stuff. Next picture. Um, and uh, the doors, as you can see, they were blocked in and filled with uh, concrete. Uh, next. And this is after, of course, you can see most of the demolition was done. And uh, 
you can see where the wall was, uh, but right in the middle of the, uh, between the two doors where the wall was, it was built down the middle of the station to, for housing for the, uh, the fire chief and his family next. Uh, and this, of course, uh, the same time, just looking outside, uh, we, uh, they, we blocked up all the windows because if you noticed, uh, uh, you can see part of a chain link fence on one side, but they had removed most of the chain link around. And uh, uh, you can see right through the park all the way to the church, there was nothing there. Uh, it was an empty uh, lot. They had been, uh, the first city water tower was uh, to the rear of the building to the south. Next, uh, This is uh, uh, after we, after a lot of, mostly volunteer, almost all volunteer, uh, not, we weren't volunteer, but all people from the Pompano Fire Department of Fire Rescue had uh, did volunteered to do all the work uh, to uh, do the restoration of the building. And uh, in, in uh, lieu of, uh, of getting uh, 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 hazed by the older guys. Uh, so uh, next picture. We're almost there. Okay, here it is. It's, that's the first set of doors uh, that we had uh, made. Uh, they were made out of uh, P111, uh, which is uh, like a plywood um, uh, and uh, over some other wood. Uh, but as you can see, it's a basically it's a, just a little cube sitting there and the tennis courts are on the so other side. There was a house on the other side, but um, I, I Dane, did that house burn down or did they tear it down? I think we burned it down. Yeah, I think I think we burned it down. Anyway, next picture. Uh, that was this was later. Uh, this this was a later uh, on a few years uh, uh, when the doors had been been replaced already again, and you can see that the uh, behind it the historical society building is there. Uh, next picture. Um, Next picture. Uh, this was um, after the first restoration, we had a little engine trouble and uh, I was asked to help uh, with it. And um, go ahead, next picture. And that's a young Rob Brantley uh, leaning over uh, the engine there while everybody was uh, like uh, uh, thinking I'd lost my mind because I was taking it down so far. Uh, next picture. Um, then uh, in uh, 2002, we, uh, uh, that, uh, those other pictures were from the 80s. This was, uh, uh, in 2002, I'd acquired lots of parts and uh, we looked all over for the best mechanics and this is all we could come up with. Uh, so I decided that we just do it, me and a lot of friends of mine. Uh, Army, is he, did he leave? Yes, sir. Oh, is Army up there? Anyway, go next, next picture. Uh, this is just some pictures of the uh, engine uh, uh, being uh, restored. Uh, go ahead. And that's uh, with the, uh, that's me and Mike Gear. He's a firefighter still in the department. He hadn't been on very long. He helped a lot. And uh, uh, that was before we were, we installed it back in the engine. If you look behind there, you can see the uh, frame and the pump and the uh, uh, the other stuff, um, other parts of the truck. Go ahead. Uh, this is a uh, Rob Brantley with hair that was actually red, and um, that's Mark Miner. Who I went to high school with him. He has a fabricating shop, and he uh, without Mark, uh, we would never have finished this project. Um, this was probably two thousand three or four when we painted the frame and uh, we painted next picture. Uh, there it is with the wheels on it. Uh, next picture. Uh, that's installing the uh, engine back in the truck. This is mostly about the 26 La France, as you can tell. Yeah. Uh, there's just so much to talk about on other things. And uh, I, I really don't like to talk a lot, but uh, going to the next picture. 
Is that the oh the, the the engine actually grew legs. If you look below the engine there, uh, we attached legs at the knee right to, to the engine. No, that's Larry Maselli uh, uh, behind the engine there. It kind of you, you might be able to see the top of his head, or that's somebody else maybe. Uh, no, uh, go to the next picture. There's Larry's head there. Uh, we, uh, it was a pretty big job putting the engine back in it uh, together because it uh, weighs. A couple of tons. Uh, it, uh, I, I like to go barefoot when I'm doing stuff like working around heavy equipment. Um, is it, oh, there's the same set of keys I have on. Uh, anyway, go ahead next. Uh, that's uh, pretty pretty close to getting finished. Um, uh, next picture. That's uh, a completed picture uh, of the truck. That was uh, 2000. It was either at the end of 2007 or so, or 2008, something like that. Who's dog? Um, that was a good friend of mine's dog. Um, uh, go ahead, next picture. Uh, I just love this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I was slim and trim, uh, still had red hair. And my face, in fact, most of me is red, it looks like. But uh, going to the next picture, uh, so just a Another picture of the, go ahead, next, next. That's it, that's, it. that's the end of the show. Um, anyway, thanks for uh, listening, whoever put up with that for that long. And uh, next time we'll go a little deeper into this. Um, bye. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Rob. Yeah, that's quite Do we need to sign off? Wow. Do we need to sign off? Or hey, Escuda, thanks for your help. Okay. All right, folks, we thank you very much for uh, joining us. And Rob, you did a good job of explaining. I think I did a damn good job. You did a real good job uh, of explaining our fire museum, uh, our fire station, our first fire station here in Pompano. And, uh, oh, you know, I can do a question and answer thing. But we'll yes, save that for next time. Thank you. We'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for tuning in. And again, remember our Highwayman expedition there that will be in two weeks. 13th, the 14th, and 15th of November. And uh, thank you folks for tuning in. So as far as Peter Williams, the president of the Pompano Beach Historical Society, Dave Brantley, that was your host. We thank Rob, you. Rob Brantley. Oh, I'm Dave. sorry, yes. Yes, I like to call him Dave sometimes, but Rob Brantley. And uh, we thank you for tuning in and look forward to uh, seeing you at our next oh, uh, program. So thank you folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.